Welcome to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. I'm your host with the most, Phil Falcone, and my co-host Jeremy Ricci and Larry Steinhaus here on WWDB 860 AM. Addicted to Real Estate Radio is what you're listening to. Let me tell you a little bit about us. We buy houses. We educate real estate investors on how to become millionaires. And we do also have an agency for investors who want to be agents and agents who want to be investors. We bridge the gap between these two businesses that work beautifully together. That's right. There is no conflict between being a real estate investor and a real estate agent. So how are you guys doing today? Wait, i got to ask you a question. You're the host with the most? The most what? I don't know. We'll figure the mo- that the out. most co-hosts. <laughs> That's good. I like that. The host with the most co-hosts. Co-host. Wait, you only have two. So we got two. We got we got you know we got an open microphone here. We should have another guest on the show. We should. Yeah. Well, who are we gonna who are we gonna invite? Well, we can invite Macaroni. But Macaroni, you want to be on the show? Sure, right now. I love the show. Well, make, there... sure you, make sure you stay in the booth though, because we want to make sure that everything gets you know recorded properly, and you know, and just in case one of us decides to use a dirty word, that you bleep us out. I hope no one uses dirty words. And I stay don't know on, any. Stay on that, that bass and tremble control. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we should get back to What do you think? We should, should we get back to real estate? Okay, let's do that. <laughs> so do we have any questions today, Jeremy? We have, a, we have uh, several questions. The That's questions, the questions of the day good. we're going to talk about in the first segment are, what's the best way to determine the value of a property? Second question is, I want to make a seller financing offer. What paperwork do I need? And Macaroni has a question. What were you going to ask? My question is, I'm thinking about investing. How would I know what the best area is? Okay. That's we'll a cover great question. That. I like yeah. it. I get that a lot, too. Cool. So our main topic for today is buy and hold versus fix and flip and wholesaling. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the, uh, the differences in strategy and why you might want to do one over the other. Hmm. That sounds like a good topic. And then we can explain more about how Phil has the most co-hosts. <laughs> I'm happy to talk about my co-host, but I prefer to be referred to as the host with the most co-hosts. <laughs> I don't know, man. I think we need to go to a commercial. Yeah, we, we you know, the other thing that we should talk about, too, is, is um, the, uh, you know, the seminar that we that we had, we were promoting it a lot, phillyseminar.com, and, and just uh, how that went, and tell everybody about what they missed that and was, why they should come to the next one. Yeah, that was really exciting, actually. You know, we should probably spend one. It's the first time we did, like, an all-day event in a while, so it was nice. We should cross off the list and, and talk the last segment about that, because that was really fun. Okay, we'll do it. The most fascinating thing about um, Saturday's all-day seminar was – that Larry asked me a real estate question in the parking lot after the presentation, and I said... Wait, oh, wait, no, 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 no. Yeah, I'm going to play wait, it. Don't, no, no, I'm no. going to play it even if I have to use the microphone. I'm going to play it because I recorded it. I was going to say, the best, way to to see it, the best way to see it is to friend us on Facebook. Why that's, not do that? That's true. That's Why true. not friend Phil Falcone on Facebook and Larry Steinhaus on Facebook and Jeremy Ricci on Facebook? And if you friend us and we decide to accept your friendship, <laughs> you'll be able to see that video. And it's something you will never hear Phil Falcone say again. Yes, but, but we're definitely going to play it for you. But you have to wait for it because I want to make sure you're still here after the commercial so you can hear it. Okay. Speaking of which, do we want to go to a commercial break? I suppose this would be a wonderful time to go to commercial break. I'm Phil Falcone. You're listening to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. We'll be right back. As a real estate agent, you know that most people buy a house once every seven years. Imagine working with clients that buy seven houses every year. At Addicted to Real Estate, they teach you how to work with investors because they are investors. Located in Montgomeryville, Hatboro, and Huntington Valley, work at an agency built for investors, buy investors, and finally learn how to invest yourself. Addicted to Real Estate Agency. Call them now, 215-321-SELL. 215-321-SELL. I can't stand this traffic. I need a vacation. 
slip away to Siesta Key in Sarasota, Florida. You can stay at one of our vacation rentals at the number one rated beach in the United States. Check out GoSiesta.com where you can rent a fully furnished vacation rental for less than the cost of a stinking hotel room. Check out GoSiesta.com or call 863-2-SIESTA. That's 863-2-SIESTA or GoSiesta.com. GoSiesta.com or call 863-2-SIESTA. I'm going! When dealing with your home financing, you need a lender you can trust. A mortgage lender like Thomas Farris at First Choice Loan Services Incorporated. The purchase of your home will likely be the largest financial investment you will make in your lifetime. Work with a mortgage provider who considers your long-term financial goals and puts you first. Thomas Farris at First Choice Loan Services will provide you competitive mortgage rates and service beyond belief for every step of the loan process. Call Thomas Farris at 215-983-8649 today to visit about your mortgage needs. Thomas Farris, NMLS, number is 785398. First Choice Loan Services Incorporated, NMLS, number 210764, equal housing lender. Robinson Insurance Group is addicted to real estate's preferred insurance broker. Why deal with an insurance agent who only represents one company? Robinson Insurance Group can quote you all the companies and shop to get you the best insurance for your needs. Fix and flip, landlord coverage, last minute deals, no problem. Investor deals are no issue and nobody is ever denied. Call Robinson Insurance Group, 215-918-2555. That's 215-918-2555. I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. I got a question for you. What do you get for $4.95 a month at Executech Suites? You get an office big enough for one person. You get the furniture in that office. You get the telephone on the desk. You get the telephone number. You get the fax number. You get the Internet. You get two full-time receptionists to answer the phone in the name of your company and patch the calls to you, whether you're in the office, in your car, or at home sleeping on a couch. You get the conference rooms. You get the mailboxes. You get the printer, the copy, the scanner. You get the janitorial service, the utilities, and free coffee. I know it's hard to believe that you could get all those things for $495 a month, but it's true. 67 Buck Road in Huntington Valley, Executech Suites. Give us a call, 215-942-7701, 215-942-7701. Hi, I'm Larry Steinhaus, and I'm addicted to real estate. Are you a real estate investor? Do you know the value of having a real estate license? It's awesome. You get to make even more money and get exposed to deals you probably would have missed. Well, today is your lucky day. I will pay for your real estate license. Find out more by calling me at 215-378-9190. That's right. I will pay for your license. Call now, 215-378-9190. Addicted to real estate, bridging the gap between investors and realtors. 215-378-9190. Welcome back to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. I am still the host with the most co host <laughs> And now we're going to get right into the questions. Can I see the list of questions, Jeremy? Thank you. That's very kind of you. We're, we're starting right here? Yeah, a couple of these questions are from Facebook, and uh, we got one from Macaroni coming up. So. so if you become our friend on Facebook, you can send us questions, and then you'll hear your questions on the show. And you can see some really cool stuff that we post about real estate. Uh, nothing about politics, right, Phil? Hardly <laughs> ever. Hardly ever. <laughs> and we the, definitely don't have kitty cat pictures. The last thing I posted about uh, politics was a giant pinata. Yeah. Yeah. You have to go to Facebook to check it out. <laughs> it's pretty funny. It's pretty so, funny. yeah, so just look up Larry Steinhouse, Jeremy Ricci, and, of course, Phil Falcone, the host with the most co-hosts. The host with the most co-hosts. I like that. I like it, too. Good. Okay, let's get to our first question. What's the best way to determine the value of a property? The aftermarket value, I think, was the question, right? Well, I mean, I, th- I guess you oh, could, either one. We could cover both if you want. <laughs> okay, sure. Yeah. The best way to determine the after repaired value of the property, the best way to determine if we're talking single family homes, is comparable sales, comparable homes, and and comparable sales are. A house that's similar to the house, as similar as possible to the house you're looking at, in as close as proximity to the house that you're looking at, and in as close of condition as the house you're looking at. And what else? What else? Am I missing any? No, that's actually great. Yeah, and it's easy. Like if you're doing a townhouse, you're in a townhouse development, and all the townhouses are relatively the same. It's really easy. But when you're doing these one-off houses, 
you know, that, that that have three acres, and another one has three acres, and that one two acres. And those are the top. Oh, you know what I missed? I missed um, that sold in a recent amount of time mm. since you know, if you find a, com- a comparable comp as they call that sold uh, eighteen months ago, that's n- obviously not as good as one that sold three months ago or two months ago or this month. Or so you're looking for. W- Area homes that have sold and as, as similar as, as the property you're looking at. So, Larry, what what's the best? I mean, you can go on to some of the websites like Zillow or Trulia or Redfin, uh, and you get some idea. But what's the where's the best place to go? Yeah, obviously the the best place to go is to the MLS system, the trend MLS system that we use in this area is 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 the, is going to give you the real information. Now, you know, like the, the websites like Zillow and those other. So the websites, they do give you information, and the, the only problem is they're using some kind of weirdo algorithm to come up with the value of the property, and it's not as accurate as eyes on. So you may have an anomaly in there that's making the property look really high or making the property look really low. I kind of tend to look at the Zillow or the or whatever those are, uh, at, you know, estimates just to get a really rough idea. You know, I mean, if someone's asking 300000 and Zillow, and, you know, it's a relatively populated area, and Zillow's got the thing at 200000 now I'm questioning it. But Zillow might say two seventy five, and somebody else might say three twenty five. So, you know, now I, now I need to really figure out what the difference is, and that's really the best to do is, is to talk to someone who has access to Trend MLS. And, of course, if you're a real estate agent, you have access to Trend MLS. This is one of the reasons we highly recommend as a real estate investor you get your real estate license. And I know you heard me a million times tell you, and we're still doing it, we will pay for you to get your real estate license. Just give me a call. And, I'll leave, you know, you can call me directly on my cell phone, 215-378-9190, and I will pay for your real estate license. You know, it's funny. Uh, at the beginning of the show, I recommended that people friend me on Facebook. I already got one. He just heard what you said, and he actually just sent me a question. He said, what the heck is a weirdo algorithm? <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks a lot for putting me on the spot. Well, so basically, and again, I don't know what Zillow's doing. Zillow's pulling information from different areas. And, you know, and I use the word weirdo to say that it's really not that accurate. Yeah, you know, it's even when they show, they'll show you a map and they'll show you houses that have sold, which is nice. And they show you maybe the square footage based on public records and how many bedrooms and how many baths and all that stuff. So you can get some, like you said, general sense. But what they don't show you is the pictures of the condition on the sold properties and whatnot. You can see active properties. And and um, I wouldn't say active properties are a good comp. You, you have to look at solds as a good right, comp. Right. Active Anybody can ask what, you know, nothing. they can ask a million dollars for the house next door. It doesn't mean they're going to get it. Correct. You know, or they can ask a million dollars, you know, for a piece of commercial property on, on a, on a uh, corner. It doesn't know, mean they're going to get it. And here's, a, here's, a, here's another strange comp. I mean, another strange way to comp properties. Just look at the value at, that it was in 2006. That's what it Yeah, is. it's probably <laughs> worth that now. But but what I was going to say is with the MLS, you can see the pictures of the interior photos of the properties, and mm-hmm. that's something you can't yeah. see after they've sold on some of these data syndic- you know syndicated data sites. Right. You also can't – you don't know if there's been seller assist. You don't know if it's FHA. You don't know what the circumstances are, were in which the person bought it. Sometimes you're going to have on, – on either, even the MLS, you're going to have uh, – an anomaly where you have a property that was sold way below market value, which pulls pulls those comps down as well. You know, maybe it was sold because it was an REO. Maybe it was sold because it was trashed. You know, there was there was it was just horrible condition. Maybe it was bought in foreclosure. Maybe it was uh, bought from a relative to a relative. So those prices can can really obscure the results. I heard something from a broker uh, or it was an appraiser. I forget. Who, who said about the seller's assist that you shouldn't even look at that. And the reason he said it was because regardless of the seller's assist, the property had to appraise for the sales price. That's true. It, it, so it, so it, the it, seller's just, assist yeah. isn't as relevant. And I, I've actually used a seller's assist. Let's say a property sold for two nineteen, but there's a $10,000 seller's assist. I consider the property to have sold for two two oh nine. I agree with but, you, actually. But it still had to appraise for two nineteen in order for the bank to be able to lend on it. Is that true? That, that's absolutely true, but I have to I, I, see if I'm buying properties, and that's what the show's about. 
the shows about you know being a real estate investor. You know, you're right. If I if I need to if I need to show somebody their house is worth more, I'm going to ignore the seller assist. But if I'm buying properties, I'm going to use the seller assist to leverage my right. my price down. Yeah, as you're talking to a seller, if you if you're talking to a seller, sure, that's the amount that they're going to net. But if you're selling a property that you've just fixed up, let's say, you can discard the seller's assist because the property would have appraised. Plus, in the end, what the seller gets, what the net, the net, this, what the net is that the seller gets is after seller assist. Sure. So you still have to use that number and say, look, this is really what you're going to net. I can list your property at this, but in the end, you're going to end up with this anyway because that's what the other person got. Well, all that is really great advice. I think you guys are just missing one thing. I mean, I do all the things that you guys do, okay? But when once I've completed all of that evaluation, I tell the people that in order for me to truly know what their house is worth, they have to have me over for dinner. <laughs> you said that before. That's hilarious. And what do they need to cook? <laughs> yeah. That would depend. That I mean, would depend. Well, Macaronis would be nice. You know? <laughs> we'll get know. the macaroni in a minute. We got another question before we get to him. I want to make a seller financing offer is our next question. What paperwork do I need? It's a, it's a weirdly worded question, right? So you, they want to make a seller financing offer. So it, it, he's going to make the offer to the to – the, to the, and I'm going to assume he's making the offer to the seller, correct? Yeah, let's, let's go down the whole road. Let's go down the road. Sure. Of, you know, in the beginning, just to make the offer, you need a uh, purchase and sale agreement. And that could be the – 19-page uh, yeah, right, sure. board, board of board of realtors uh, agreement, or it could be on a napkin that you hand write. So all you need to have is a meeting of the minds, and you have to have a piece of paper that discusses that, and everything with real estate needs to be in writing. So you, you put it in writing, and it can be s- simply on a napkin. Uh, however, we, uh, we use paperwork out of our buyer's briefcase, which is um, has seller financing on it. I find it very interesting that the Pennsylvania uh, Association of Realtors PAR contract doesn't even have a spot to put seller financing. Yeah, I know. We it's weird, about that isn't it? Yeah, There's it not even weird. an addendum yeah. that says seller financing addendum. Uh, in Florida, they, they do actually have it on the state forms. It's on the state forms. But for some reason in Pennsylvania, uh, I blame it on the Quaker tradition that everything was cash, you know, back in the day. So um, a lot of people get I blame financing. It on the these realtors. Days. Yeah. Well,. <laughs> Who don't there, understand creativeness? There's not a there's not a place for it. But we have a a three page contract that we use that has a section that has to do with seller financing and it has to do with you know what's the monthly payment, what's the the amount that the seller is going to carry, and um, whether they're in first position or second position. Let's say you're bringing in private money on the deal and you put your private investor in first and the and the seller is going to carry a second. So you need to have the right paperwork to do that. And you can if you go to addictedrealestate.com and you check out our products tab. You can see the the there's a one of our modules in the buyer's briefcase has to do with with owner financing seller financing. So if you check out that module, you can get the paperwork for that. So that's just to make the offer. Now let's say the seller accepts the offer. The the next paperwork that we use is the um, at the time of closing, you're going to have to do a promissory note. So the promissory note. Let's say you're buying a property for 150 thousand and you offer a thousand dollars a month for 150 months. You need a promissory note that that lays out those terms, and you need a mortgage to secure that promise, which will be recorded by the title company when you buy the property. So they'll record the the mortgage, and then you'll also sign a promissory note. And the promissory note would be a promise to pay the the seller in exchange for buying their house. So and the, the, right, the promissory note has all the terms. And it has all the terms and in it. If there's a balloon on it, if there's amortizing, if it's sure. um, principal only, like we recommend you, you you try to get. Even if you have to pay a little bit more for the property, we, we recommend you try to negotiate a, a payment that makes sense and a a term and a and an interest rate that's you know less than or equal to zero. <laughs> I don't I like know if you that. can do less than zero. <laughs> I like that. I, and, I, and I still haven't done that. And you yeah. guys impress me with the fact that you do Yeah, that. we need to do more of those, actually. We, we've we been doing all, subject to deals left and right, and so have you, Larry. But we, we need to do some more seller financing deals. So I'm going to send out some marketing, too. Yeah, we need to drop marketing specifically for those kind of deals because yeah. they, they're they my favorite kind of deal. And you sure. can get wealthy uh, so many additional ways by doing deals like that. And what kind of, what kind of properties will we market to? If we're looking for seller financing, 
free people have no mortgages. Properties? Free and clear properties, or almost free and clear. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. Even if they have like 50% equity, you could always bring in a private investor to pay off the first and then have the seller carry some financing. And you could do so. a subject to and seller financing. Yeah. How about people who bought properties a couple decades ago and also bought them in years which were prices were low? Then you would almost guarantee that the people who are going to call you are people who bought well. Have some equity. Probably yeah. have a lot of equity. That's you're looking for equity. Yeah. So when people call us, we're looking for two things. We're looking for motivation or equity. If somebody has equity but they're not motivated, that's okay. How about people who bought between 1995 and 1999? Yeah, definitely. That'd be yeah. a wonderful time to buy. And the other, the other thing I recommend is is marketing to landlords, that long-time landlords, because the idea is they're used to accepting rental payments. So the idea of them accepting a mortgage payment from you is easier to swallow because they're used to accepting payments, and a lot of times they just want, don't want the hassle of managing tenants, toilets, and trash. Yeah. So did no you buy anything in between uh, 1995 and 1999? No, I didn't. No. I didn't even get started in the real estate business until 2002. I bought so my, I did buy I bought I did. my primary residence in that window. It was I a bought a car. I got I bought a car in that window. <laughs> well, I paid I paid $175,000 for my primary residence which I still live in today 18 years later during that window and I remember it was worth 100 grand more than I paid for it maybe uh not even two years after I bought it. Wow. So it was a great time to buy. Oh, yeah. And then when we hit 2000, it went boom, boom, boom. It just kept going up like 50 grand a year. It was it was a beautiful thing. Yeah, I was kind of slow in those years. I actually bought five houses that all almost tripled, and I sold them all in the, in the 2000, the early 2000. And yeah. then I did it again, and, you know, we all know what happened then. I was still in the IT industry at the time, so I was preparing for the um, – the Y2K, Y2K okay, meltdown. Yes, yes, I was yeah. actually hired in 99 to uh, to prepare a company for Y2K meltdown. And it, but I did – I remember talking to a real estate investor mentor of mine who was so scared of the Y2K that he had his bathtub full of one-gallon jugs of water all the way up till it was overflowing. So he was preparing for generators and, you know, st- stocking up all this uh, canned goods and everything. And then Y2K happened and nothing happened. Well, one thing about this time frame that makes me think and want to talk about is here was this period of about five years where it was a really good time to buy. And then what came after that period was a really powerful upsurge in real estate prices where people became millionaires, easily became millionaires. And you know what right now feels a lot like that time frame? I agree. Right you know what also precipitated like that, that was the um – the stock market. What did the stock market do right there in 2000? Well, the stock market tanked in the summer of 2000. So there you go. So and so why? how does that help real estate? Well, it helps real estate tremendously because money, people who have money have to make money off their money. And if you know anybody who has any real money, that is the main focus of their lives is figuring out ways to have the money that they have earn more money. So if the stock market becomes something that they view as dangerous, the money gets moved into a very safe asset class, real estate. All right, well, let's get to Macaroni's question. We don't want to squeeze him out. Macaroni, what's your question again? What's the best uh, marketing strategy for selling my house? If I wanted to sell a house. You actually yeah, you're adding your, another question. Added, yeah, that was, that was not the same question you asked but a little while ago. We get, well, I'll get but that that's okay. next I'm show. okay with yeah, that. Yeah. All right, I got another question then. How should I prepare to sell my house? He's like, he just keeps asking you questions. We get, we'll, we'll make macaroni questions the whole next show. Yeah, yeah, that? no, that, that, that's not bad. Could you, no, the first, right? one, the first yeah, one we'll go over is, how, is uh, you're looking to get into investing. How do you get into a good area? Which area do you pick? Uh-huh. Do you remember asking that question? He's shaking his head yes. He doesn't, he's so embarrassed now that he doesn't even want to get in the microphone. He's the radio <laughs> producer, and, you know, on the radio, shaking, nodding your head. It's like when the, <laughs> that, that doesn't, just, doesn't that, seem that, to work, you know. If, you know, if you're if you're on the phone with your doctor and say, you, say, you know, does your head hurt? You know, you can't well, nod. Here's your head. the thing about macaroni. I mean, no matter what he says, he always has the option to edit himself out of the show <laughs> or edit himself in. Yeah, or That's edit us out. He we can re-record be, we everything careful. that he says, and you know. He we could, don't have that luxury. He could take our words and, and change them around. He could. He could make us look silly. So I guess we need to wait till we the We don't need show. anybody to make us look silly. Do we silly. have any time to even answer his question at this point? <laughs> I, I say answer his question quickly. Okay. What, what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> Which area do you invest in? So I, I would say that the best 
place to invest is places that you know. I don't think that you should um, invest in neighborhoods that you're not familiar with. You should invest in neighborhoods that you are familiar with so that you know what's going on in those neighborhoods. You know, you, know, you can easily hop on the MLS and find what comparables are in any area if you, that you have access to, but you don't know what's going on, especially in Philadelphia. In Philadelphia, neighborhoods change from block to block, and you need to know what those what those blocks are doing, where those major divides are. When you get, like we were talking about, a property that somebody called us on in uh, Point Breeze, which is south of Washington and west of Broad. Um, but a couple blocks west, it's the prices are totally different. So you, 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 the closer you get to Broad Street, the higher the prices are. The closer you get to Washington, the higher the prices are. If you The, the further you stray from that, I mean, heck, you cross Washington – and now all of a sudden you're in um, graduate hospital area, and the prices jump hundreds of thousands of dollars more to be to, to just cross that cross that road. So I mean that's just an example of the city. There's there's definitely different pockets in the suburbs. You know, you need to invest in an area. It's I think it's tough to invest in an area where the prices are really high. Where we're talking about houses that are above two hundred fifty thousand or more, it's really tough to make those rentals and make any sense of those. So I would say first-time home buyer markets, first-time home buyer neighborhoods are good areas that are near right. near where you live. I thought we didn't have enough time. Now you're going into this long-winded answer. Well, that's it. That's I got a I quick got. answer from Macaroni. You only need to know three things in order to invest in an area. One, you need to know that prices are cheap. Two, you need to know that people want to move to that neighborhood. Now, if you got those two things, you're going to do really well. And then the third thing is that my mom has to say it's okay to invest there. My mom's a good business lady, so I always check with her before I do anything. And I have a rule of thumb that's a really good rule of thumb. It's you only buy a property that you could live in. Not that you would live in, but you could live in. Just in case you have to. Just in case you have to, right? <laughs> well, my rule of thumb is... My and macaroni <laughs> might have to. My you rule might. of thumb is don't, don't buy properties in neighborhoods I wouldn't send my wife at night. Yeah, and that's basically, the, I think that's pretty much what I'm saying. Okay. Well, my mom would not let me do that, so I don't need that rule. Yeah. All right, you are listening to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. We'll be right back. Have you heard about the recent low mortgage rates? Have you started thinking about refinancing your home? Why not work with a mortgage lender who puts you first? Thomas Farris at First Choice Loan Services Incorporated will provide you personalized service to make sure your home financing meets your needs both now and in the future. Call Thomas Farris at 215-983-8649 today and learn how the current low interest rates may mean it's the right time for you to buy or refinance. Call Thomas Farris at 215-983-8649. Thomas Farris, NMLS, number is 785398. First Choice Loan Services Incorporated, NMLS number 210764, Equal Housing Lender. Hi, my name is Phil Falcone. I wrote a book called Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And if you'd love to see an investment book written by a Philadelphian about investing in Philadelphia, I'm your man. You can check out my book at addictedtorealestate.com with the number two. I have a free web TV show there. I have free investment forms for real estate investors. And I have my book that you can check out, Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And the website is addicted to real estate with the number two dot com. Robinson Insurance Group is addicted to real estate's preferred insurance broker. Why deal with an insurance agent who only represents one company? Robinson Insurance Group can quote you all the companies and shop to get you the best insurance for your needs. Fix and flip, landlord coverage, last minute deals, no problem. Investor deals are no issue and nobody is ever denied. Call Robinson Insurance Group, 215-918-2555. That's 215-918-2555. As a real estate agent, you know that most people buy a house once every seven years. Imagine working with clients that buy seven houses every year. At Addicted to Real Estate, they teach you how to work with investors because they are investors. Located in Montgomeryville, Hatboro, and Huntington Valley, work at an agency built for investors, buy investors, and finally learn how to invest yourself. Addicted to Real Estate Agency. Call them now, 215-321-SELL. 215-321-SELL. 
I'm Phil Falcone from Executech Suites. Do you have a voicemail machine answering your business calls during the day? Oh, please tell me it's not true. I have an answering service for you that only costs $99 a month. We're real humans. That's right. We have live humans answering the phone in the name of your company and patching the calls to you for only $99 a month. And there are no contracts, so you can try it out anytime you like and cancel it whenever you like. Executech Suites, 215-942-7701. Hi, I'm Larry Steinus, and I'm addicted to real estate. Have you been thinking about getting your real estate license? Well, have I got news for you. We are currently training new agents to be addicted to real estate. If you are tired of your day-to-day, paycheck-to-paycheck life, I will pay for your real estate school and your license. Become addicted to real estate on me. Hurry before we change our minds. Call me at 215-378-9190. That's 215-378-9190. Call now, 215-378-9190. Welcome back to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. Larry, why don't you tell us what we're going to be talking about? Boy, we had such an argument during during the during the commercial break over what was coming up that we have to actually have a boxing match. What was the question exactly, Jeremy? Uh, we talked about the main topic being buy and hold right, versus right. fix and flip. What right, should you do? Right. right. So I'm buy and hold. And you are? I'm buy and hold. No, I'll, I'll do fix and flip. I'll take that side Let's of it. Let's try that again. I'm buy and hold. I'm fix and flip. And I'm the referee. Okay. And round one is coming up right now. Ding, ding, ding. Okay, so I will advocate uh, the fix and flip if you're in a situation where you are you want to replace your job, you want to replace your income, then fix and flip is a great strategy. You can make you can make some Boku bucks finding, uh, finding property that's well under market ba- value, Fixing it up, adding Jeremy's some value there. Jeremy's being beat down in the corner with his, with his lack of enthusiasm. Well, come on, Phil. I'll tell you what you I did, what you take him down, so take him down. Fix and flip, please. You end up selling the asset at the end, and you're just as broke at the end. You might have some cash in your pocket, but Uncle Sam's going to come and take about 40% of it, and you just sold off a beautiful asset that you could have kept, sat on for 10 years, and sold for three times what you bought it for. Jeremy's on the ropes. He's on the ropes. Okay, okay. Yeah. However, you can make boatloads of cash. Let's say you're, you have a, you have some consumer debt you need to pay off. How do you do that with a rental property? You're going to pay off your consumer debt at $100 a month in cash flow, $200 a month in cash flow? Oh, he's you need firing chunky back. He's money. firing back. Chunky money, chunky money. So do do four fix and flips. Make twenty grand, thirty grand a fix and flip. Thirty, you know, times four, one hundred and twenty grand. Is that Ooh. will that get you out of your day job? One hundred twenty grand. Oh, we got your Donald uppercut. Trump does it. What did you say, ref? <laughs> Don't be <laughs> talking over my time. I'm trying to punch him out here, man. I'm giving him a combo. Oh right? no, the ref's getting hit. Does Donald Trump buy skyscrapers and then flip them? No. He gets a piece of him, he sits there, and he collects the rent from him for the rest of his life. If Jeremy owned a cow farm, he'd slaughter all his cows. You know what I'd do with them? I'd milk them. I'd milk them for the next two decades, okay? I'll tell you, I like steak better than milk, so I'd rather have the steak. Okay, well, how do you (laughs) eat cereal in the morning? I don't eat cereal in the morning. I eat eggs. I'm on a diet. <laughs> I gotta protein, admit, I don't, protein. I don't I don't drink milk either because you know man is the only animal that drinks the milk of another creature. Well he's off the talk, topic I'm macaroni. going in for the uppercut. <laughs> uh, this is like you can tell both contestants are really tired right now. They can <laughs> barely pick up they can barely pick up their arms. We we're talking about We got we got Every, fifteen about, seconds left of the we round. Buying, Everybody hold knows that buy and hold is the way to get rich. <laughs> Hey, macaroni's got some sound effects. Macaroni That's awesome. just ended the argument. <laughs> All right, Raph. All right. No, actually, it's I really tough. Should... It's really tough for me to take the side of fix and flip because Wait I a like buy old. You're supposed to be in the corner right now, getting yeah. instructions. Yeah, you you got to you got to be tending to that black guy. Oh, let's round go to two. round number two. Ring the bell. All right, ring the bell, macaroni. Oh, and they're coming out fighting. Here we go. Oh, you know, man. Fix, I'm going to go with fix and flip. There's one thing I like about fix and flip that's that's really a good motivator and makes you feel very accomplished is when you take a property that's all beat up, torn up, smells like cat urine, and all of a sudden you get a beautiful property with granite countertops and beautiful fixtures and be able to sell that to an end user and just the pride of accomplishment of taking that that ugly piece of junk property and turning it into a gym. And I, I think that it definitely does something to uh, to help your self-esteem. 
Jeremy's somebody, pushing somebody, Phil back. He's pushing Phil back. Somebody give me a tissue. I'm about to cry. <laughs> Why can't you take a messed up property, fix it up, and keep it and enjoy the benefits of your hard work for the rest of your life? Because you know tenants will tear it up. They'll just tear it up. They won't appreciate not your granite. Not the kind of tenants I buy. You buy tenants? <laughs> I know what he meant, though, because I agree with him. I, I'm even hitting you on that one. Okay. okay. Tenants are never a problem. Fight, I'm not even, I know. I'm not even in the argument. I got to be. Uh, you go ahead. I'm sorry. I had, I had to get in there and, you know, push these guys apart. You have to make sure that you check your tenants out thoroughly and you put them good people in your houses and then you make sure that they have you over for dinner once every three months. Wait a second, wait a second. Okay. But if I sell a property, I can always drive by that. If I buy a property, fix it up and sell it, I can always drive by that property with my kids and say, look, kids, I used to own that. And then drive by the next one and say, look, I used to own that. And then, Oh, wait, that's an argument for your point. I'm sorry. I don't know about you. If I see a guy driving <laughs> by my... In the face. If I see a guy driving around my property a lot, I mean, I'm calling the police, you know? Could be a child molester or something. I got kids in the back of the car. Come on. <laughs> oh, I oh. see it. This round's over. <laughs> what kind of bell is that? There, there you go. go. That's Thanks. better. That's better. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you guys, you guys have anything left and you to keep to keep going, or, or or am I gonna? I got a little bit more. All right. All right. I don't want to. Wait, 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 wait! Gotta wait for the bell. Oh, gotta start the round again, man. All right, macaroni, hit it up. Go for it, Phil. When I'm driving around Philadelphia neighborhoods with my students, with the people I'm mentoring, and with my offspring, my son Stone. I don't want to go see that house, Stone. I bought that house for $50,000, and I sold it for sixty five. No. I want to say, Stone, you see that house? I bought that house for fifty. We still own that house, and today it's worth 225000 I'd want to encourage my son to invest in the Philadelphia market, to beautify it, and to constantly be bringing it up from the ashes. To become one of the greatest cities in the world. And Jeremy is down. No, no, no. One, no, no, no. This is easy. Two, easy to combat this. Right? Three. I don't want to own and keep anything in Philadelphia whatsoever. <laughs> so fix and flip is the best sprint. strategy. Yes, and he's pounding I can buy away. He's property. pounding away. I can resell it. I can make money and tell Philadelphia I'm out of here. <laughs> Let me get something straight. You are a radio host in a show in Philadelphia, <laughs> but and I you invest... refuse to invest in the host city? No, I oh. invest in the suburbs. Oh, look at I like go. the suburbs. I like the suburbs. I think that the host with the most co-hosts <laughs> may remove one of his co-hosts <laughs> after this show. We're sorry, Philadelphia. Is... We apologize to everyone out there. I'll tell you, I don't invest in New Jersey, and this radio show hits New Jersey, too. Uh, let me just make one more point. I think when you're in a fight and one of the people in the fight insults the audience of the fight, I think by default I should win this fight. And the bell has to be rung. And that's it. Buy and hold wins. Technical knockout. Yeah. Technically. Technical knockout. (laughs) I'll concede, you know. I wish you took fix and flip because I don't really like fix and flip. (laughs) <laughs> I know that going into it. That's why I gave you that topic. You wanted to win, right? I got yeah, it. I you got know. It. Yeah, yeah. So if you, guys, if you guys are out there, the real wealth in this business is made when you, when you buy and hold. Yeah. You, can't, you, you, can, you can get rich, fix and flip, but you can't get wealthy unless you buy and hold. That's, it. That's exactly true. And, I, and, and as I've said this many times, one house is called my car. One house is called my, my home mortgage. One house is called my cell phone payment. One house is called my, my insurance payment. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, every time I increase a payment, I buy a house first to take that payment. So if I want to buy a motorcycle next month and the payment's 400 bucks a month, I better buy a house that's got a $400 a month cash flow. Yeah, motorcycles are $400 a month? Oh, you can get motorcycles for a lot more than that. Jeez. Especially, especially Harley-Davidson. They're, they're more than cars. Yeah, you only have two tires. Is it a ha- shouldn't it be half the price? You would think. <laughs> And only it's two cylinders. You'd think it would be one-third the price. Yeah. See, if you, if you lend money to Larry, he'll buy a house so that he can pay you back. And you'll actually have a house that's dedicated strictly to paying you back. <laughs> paying me back? And paying what was my, that? What was the, paying my, uh, my we had, we had this, What was that quote that you did at the seminar this past weekend? About uh, the clothing and the cars and all that stuff. Do you remember that quote, Phil? No, that's why I have to have that slide. <laughs> <laughs> it had something to do with most people in the day job in the rat race. Right, right, right. 
they buy clothing so they can wear it to drive to work in a car that they pay for with the money from work and a while house they, that they pay they, for while they leave that house vacant while they're working. Right. That <laughs> Something was great. like that. That was great. Yeah. You got to find that quote. I've That's seen that before, too. That was great. You got to bring that next next radio show. Bring that quote. I like to say it on the air. I will. You won't be here to remind me, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't even think that's. Good. I don't think we're going to throw them out. I think that the people are going to be standing and protesting the door to beat them up. I know all of our listeners, man. This, I can see the nasty emails coming in like okay. crazy. All right, next next time we're on the radio show, we're going to do. I, I'd like to. <laughs> I don't know if this encourages people to invest, but I'd like a couple war stories would be nice. I have some war stories in Philadelphia. I'll tell you that much. We, we I don't need, have as many war stories in the suburbs. We need to have the mayor as a as a guest on our show, so we can talk to you know, so we can tell us why people should invest in Philadelphia. I don't even know who the mayor is. I, I used to. His name is Kenny. Kenny. Okay. It is That's his last name. Oh, okay. I was I thought you were talking like the guy on South Park, Kenny. Who killed Kenny? <laughs> I'm sorry, I I stopped watching cartoons 30 years ago. Can we get back to real estate? <laughs> All right, so. For those of you who are listening and you want to know what the best strategy for you, I would say it's also a very personal situation, a personal question. It depends on where you are and what your goals are. I would say if you're looking to get out of your day job, Fix and Flip is a great way to replace a job with another job. Fix and Flip is a job. It's not passive. But building wealth, buy and hold is a great way to do it too. So we have strategies that we teach people where you can get paid to buy properties. So you're kind of like wholesaler. But wholesaling to yourself, it's what we call it, wholesaling to yourself. So it's a way you can make some chunky money and keep the property. Of course, there's skill sets that you need to learn when you're buying and holding. You need to learn property management, or at least you need to know enough about property management to hire somebody that you can determine whether or not they're competent at what they do. I know Larry does his own property management locally, but you have property that's uh, a little yeah, bit further anything north. That's, anything that's over an hour, I have a property manager for it. But, yeah, I do have, have lots of local properties, and, and uh, I still have a strong belief that there's no such thing as bad tenants. There are only bad landlords. Right. Yeah, because if you pick the right people to put in your properties, then you're going to get having good people in the properties. Number one, having selecting good properties attracts good tenants. Absolutely Because if you buy properties in, in – in horrible areas, you're going to attract people that want to live in horrible areas. Well, what if you buy a property that's in a good area, but over the course of 20 years of you buying and holding it, it becomes a horrible area? Is that my fault? You should have bought more properties in that area. <laughs> <to keep. laughs> and now your horrible property, nobody wants to rent it. I thought, didn't Trump say something about location, 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 and, and <clears throat> saying that you have to buy in a good location? And he said something about, no, you can change the location. Right. Just buy enough houses on the block, and you can change the block. That's great advice, actually. So I like it. I know uh, Bart Bladstein did that down here in Philadelphia. He built that big piazza at Schmitz. You ever been to that? Yeah. The piazza? Oh, it's really neat. Northern Liberties. He basically bought up this old junkyard and Schmitz Brewery or whatever it was and built this huge $81 million project and totally changed the neighborhood. Yeah. So values of these vacant houses you know, went from – $30,000, $50,000 to $400,000 because of this huge influx of uh, this ritzy piazza. It's like an Italian plaza. We should we should take you there sometime. Heck, we're going to go to South Philly today. Maybe we can take a, a stop by and get some lunch over at the piazza. My buddy Todd bought a uh, house there. The house is actually a triplex. Two residential apartments on each of the top two floors, and the lower level was a retail store. And he bought the property. It was totally wasted. He bought it for $50,000 like in 1993. And back then, it was a pretty dangerous neighborhood. In fact, uh, Todd told me that even though it's in Philadelphia, one time he saw a tumbleweed blow down the street <laughs> because there was nobody outside anywhere vacant, near this neighborhood. Vacant houses, yeah. At the top of the market, Todd is a construction guy, and he fixed this property up real nice. And he actually has a tattoo studio right there on 2nd Street, about three blocks down from the uh, piazza. And at the top of the market in, like, 2008, this property was worth almost a million dollars. Wow, that's a nice investment. Yeah. Well, You're I'll just kind of riding on the coattails of, the, the, you know, the big fish that, that it, made a great investment. He's a in gutsy property. investor, and he knows how to fix things. So he goes in, he, he tries to find a neighborhood where he thinks there might be some gentrification coming, and he buys on the outskirts of that 
and that's what his strategy has always been. He's done pretty well with it. You know, for retail and for business, this is a neat strategy. I have a buddy who would open up and he buy property near Wawa. Wherever there's a Wawa opening up, he would try to buy property near that because he figures they did all the demographic research. They did all the traffic counts, population density counts, try to figure out where their business would be successful. And he just tried to buy – he opened up real estate offices as close as he could to those, figuring that he was just on the coattails of their demographic research, which I thought was – you know, didn't, didn't Wendy's do the same thing for McDonald's? Yeah, but that's yeah. a little bit different. So putting a real estate office next to a Wawa – would make me think that real estate investors just drink a lot of coffee. <laughs> I do. Oh, that's kind of I where do I for sure. <laughs> I know. I'm actually, I'm thinking <laughs> about that. They're going to drink too do. much coffee. They're going to breathe in gas fumes. They're going to eat like you know unhealthy things that they sell at the store. Your tenants are all going to die. Oh, You're going to have to keep on. getting new ones. As long as they don't die in the property, it's okay with me. <laughs> <laughs> I know <laughs> because a, they come in a, and they that's put a real those, mess. No, they come in with that chalk and they put those giant body lines there. That's terrible. It's tough to get that stuff out. They don't do that at Wawa. Wawa's great, guys. Come on. You gotta, I, I'm part of that cult. I love Wawa. They're actually opening them up down in uh, Florida now. They're, they're making a big push down there. How many Wawas are we buying? This? Oh, wait. It's, we, a, it's a private company. We can't buy any. Uh, but no, no, You know what? There's a guy that I know. He, he owns a restaurant in Hapro. We talked to him. He develops the land that Wawa then sits their buildings on. And I'm not sure if they own the, you know, own the land underneath or not. But that's actually an investing strategy that we've never done. Maybe in as we get older, we would, but do these triple net leases where you, you mm-hmm. buy the land, sure. you develop it, and you go to a national franchise. 99-year lease. And, and they own the building. So that's pretty neat. It's a, it's a triple net lease strategy. It's a cool strategy. All right. Well, you've been listening to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. When we come back, we're going to tell you all about our weekend seminar and some of the exciting things that came from that. You're listening to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. We'll be right back. As a real estate agent, you know that most people buy a house once every seven years. Imagine working with clients that buy seven houses every year. At Addicted to Real Estate, they teach you how to work with investors because they are investors. Located in Montgomeryville, Hatboro, and Huntington Valley, work at an agency built for investors, buy investors, and finally learn how to invest yourself. Addicted to Real Estate Agency. Call them now, 215-321-SELL. 215-321-SELL. Hi, my name is Phil Falcone. I wrote a book called Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And if you'd love to see an investment book written by a Philadelphian about investing in Philadelphia, I'm your man. You can check out my book at addictedtorealestate.com with the number two. I have a free web TV show there. I have free investment forms for real estate investors. And I have my book that you can check out, Addicted to Real Estate, Why I Can't Stop and Why You Should Start. And the website is Addicted to Real Estate with the number two dot com. Robinson Insurance Group is Addicted to Real Estate's preferred insurance broker. Why deal with an insurance agent who only represents one company? Robinson Insurance Group can quote you all the companies and shop to get you the best insurance for your needs. Fix and flip, landlord coverage, last minute deals, no problem. Investor deals are no issue and nobody is ever denied. Call Robinson Insurance Group, 215-918-2555. That's 215-918-2555. Hi, I'm Larry Steinhaus, and I'm addicted to real estate. Are you a real estate investor? Do you know the value of having a real estate license? It's awesome. You get to make even more money and get exposed to deals you probably would have missed. Well, today is your lucky day. I will pay for your real estate license. Find out more by calling me at 215-378-9190. That's right. I will pay for your license. Call now, 215-378-9190. Addicted to real estate, bridging the gap between investors and realtors. 215-378-9190. I can't stand this traffic. I need a vacation. Slip away to Siesta Key in Sarasota, Florida. You can stay at one of our vacation rentals at the number one rated beach in the United States. Check out GoSiesta.com where you can rent a fully furnished vacation rental for less than the cost of a stinking hotel room. Check out GoSiesta.com or call 863-2-SIESTA. That's 863-2-SIESTA or GoSiesta.com. GoSiesta.com or call 863-2-SIESTA. I'm going. Welcome back to Addicted to Real Estate Radio. This is Jeremy Ricci, the co-host with the host who likes to boast. <laughs> and the on most. This, the most. <laughs> and on this 
<laughs> on this segment, we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, the seminar that we had this past weekend. <laughs> Larry's laughing so much he's coughing. <laughs> Well, you, you really want to laugh? Yeah. You really guys really want to laugh? What what Phil said after that seminar, every time I play that, every time I play that, I laugh mm-hmm. so hard. But but, you, but you, I guess so under, I, understand we had a whole day seminar nine nine a.m. all the way till six thirty. Six thirty, yeah. And we were yeah. packing up, and and I, I don't know. Did we did we ask Phil a, a real estate question? I yeah, don't remember we're, exactly. we're we're out. It was pouring rain. Right, we're, it was we're underneath rain, like the canopy of the hotel. We're packing everything in the cars. And, and we're you, tired, yeah. and we're exhausted, and we haven't eaten dinner yet, and it was, like, really, really bad. But we asked – I don't remember what the question because was. Because the seminar was really, really good. The, that's right. It was <laughs> right. That's exactly right. We, and we were, like, so high, and the seminar was over, and we were, like – we were just exhausted. What do you mean you're so high? You know, we were so high from the seminar being so excited. <laughs> we had that adrenaline rush. Got it. Got so it. <laughs> somebody said – I don't know who it was, but somebody says, Phil, about something about real estate – and let's see if we can get Macaroni to play Phil's response. Yeah, roll clip number one. <laughs> I, I really don't want to talk about real estate right now. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you see this, if you see this on Facebook and you see that you see Phil's, Phil's uh, the video of this, you will laugh hysterical. And I just every time I play it, I laugh hysterically. It's an advert. I don't know. I think I want to hear it a couple more times. Play it again, Sam. I really don't want to talk about real estate right now. <laughs> that's everybody, that's wives and girlfriends in the back all laughing hysterical because they all know Phil would never say anything like that ever. And then you it's had to get it on moment. film, right? And you're like, wait a second, wait a second. You had your <laughs> wife and your girlfriend at this real estate meeting? That's... No, I had your wife and Jer- no, Jeremy's wife wasn't there. No, Who, she was there. There was another woman there. Who was the other one? I don't remember. No, I had my girlfriend there. Okay. So you let's guys, talk about let's going? talk about what <laughs> let's talk about the meeting and 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 how that went. I think um, I think. Well, my know. favorite since I'm the guy the the co-host with the host who likes to boast. No, you're the host with the co-host. Now he's the co-host and I'm the host who likes to boast. The most. The most. The most. I forgot the most. But I gotta write that down. <laughs> I my favorite part was was the part where I was boasting. Uh, because I was talking a little bit about deals that we had closed in the last few weeks. To show people that, that we're for real, I wanted to talk about real estate deals that I had just done. So I talked about these three deals that I closed and with Jeremy in the early part of the month of May. So we did the seminar on uh, Saturday. It was May 21st. And so in three weeks, we basically closed three deals. And we went over the details of these three deals, and I gave people the address. And so I said, look, you can just look at the address, and you'll see that this thing just closed. And I was telling them about how we did the deals and how much money we made off of them. And I thought people were very impressed with my boasting. Oh, yeah, they were on the edge of the seat, especially when you – what was it, $7.2 million you made last year? Oh, oh get out of here. I don't think we're going to share <laughs> on the air. <laughs> no. So, no, but, but he made – he, if you take two good salaries, two good household salaries, good household salaries, he made more. You guys made more than that in one month. Not even in a month. It was only May twenty first when we, when we had the meeting. So it was really about less than three weeks. Yeah, absolutely. And, it, and those are, I mean, you had a great year, in a month. You know, I will tell you what. What really made it a, I think. The reason people gave us the great feedback for this meeting was that they were, we were doing case studies, and people like case studies. We oftentimes, if we if we get too technical with the ins and outs of how you do the deals and the technical part of the transactions, which I actually often do, um, it doesn't have the same effect as going through from soup to nuts. The the well, soup to you know. The, you know what soup to nuts means, I guess? They used to, that's like an old expression, I guess. You better get but, back on track, Jeremy. But anyway, but, but, <laughs> but having these case studies and sh- walking people through from the beginning to the end of the deal and showing them what money you can make in the business and showing them how we structure these deals creatively, not through the traditional means, I think is very useful in, in somebody in the audience you know, seeing how, how they get done. It's such a different world, the world that we live in, compared to the people out, people out there, how they think you buy a house. And it makes me laugh because at seminars, people always say the same thing. Well, how much did you have to put down on that house? Like, you don't get it. If you're asking that question, you just don't get it. Or some people who've gone to other seminars and, you know, they get uh, the deal analyzer computer program that takes them a half an hour to analyze the deal. 
and and they still and they still come. Uh, my deal analyzer said it's a good deal. What do you think, Larry? What do you think, Jeremy? What do you think, Phil? And I laugh and I go, if you couldn't figure out it was a good deal in thirty seconds, it's either not a good deal or you shouldn't be in this business. Yeah, we call that a keep your calculator in your pocket yeah. deal. And the whole idea is that if you have to take your calculator out of your pocket to figure out if it's a good deal, it's probably not a good deal. Or you don't know what a good deal looks like. Yeah. Well, you know, it takes experience to, to, to I guess, to figure that out. So. You can approach every deal in every way. I mean, deal I closed on last week, nobody would have, no, most people would have walked away from that deal because because it was, you know, the guy owed more money than the house was worth by far. But I took the property from him and helped him. Well, so we got a lot of great feedback on the seminar. If you guys want to come to one of our next seminars, you need to go to addictedtorealestate.com, addicted, the number two, realestate.com. And in the investor education section, put your name and email address in, and we will send you invites to our next meeting. Yep, that's the best way to keep in the loop and make sure you're invited to our meetings. Another we have thing any that books? We... Any booked at this time? Maggie's or anything? Are we doing any? Yeah, yes, yes. Cool. Uh, we do. I believe our next meeting is going to be uh, July 13th. We're going to take the month of June off. We're going to take all this money we just made, and we're all going <laughs> on vacation. And then we're coming back for a big meeting on July 13th at Maggie's. I will be announcing that on Meetup very soon. But the best way to keep in touch with us and to know what we're doing at Addicted to Real Estate is to visit addictedtorealestate.com with the number two, put your name and email address in. Let me tell you something else that I put out on that channel. If you give me your name and email address, I'll send you something once or twice a week. I won't bother you too much. Invite you to meetings, but I'll also put out real estate deals there. Occasionally, we find a deal that we buy it, but we're not going to keep it for ourselves. We're we're going to put it out to the list and sell it to one of our, you know, people who follow us, part of our family. We're going to put it out there to you. So if you if you're looking for flips and you want to you want to see what we think is a good flip, then being on that list is a great way to get that information firsthand. Macaroni's given us the peace symbol, so. Either he really likes us, he wants us to be more peaceful, or that means we have two minutes left. <laughs> and, then, and, then of, <laughs> and then, of course, if you want to learn how a really great way to hang out with us and learn more about us is you can become a real estate agent in our office. And not only that, you'll make money helping other people invest in real estate. And we're still giving you the option. I mean, it's not an option. We're still promoting the fact that we will pay for your real estate license. Give me a call at 215 378 Nine one nine zero, and I will tell you all the details and pay for your real estate license. So what you're saying is, come hang with us. Exactly, I literally. literally. And real estate agents understand what that means. Other people are going, huh? Yeah, hang your license with hang us. Hang your license with us. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and if you're in a business that's real estate related and advertising to our massive group of people who listen to this show, real estate investors and real estate agents, then this would be a great place for you to advertise your business. Give me a call, 267-988-2000, Phil Falcone, 267-988-2000, and become a sponsor on this show. And don't forget, on July 13th, Maggie's Waterfront Cafe in Northeast Philadelphia. Look for it at AddictedToRealEstate.com. Tune in every Thursday at 3 on WWDB, 860 AM, or WWDBAM.com. Wow, that's a lot to say. WWDBAM.com. And you can listen to our radio show this week and every week. Thanks a lot for tuning in, guys. We'll talk to you next week.